Welcome to Dr. P. Sivarma Economics YouTube class. And we have seen in earlier classes that aggregate demand in macroeconomics plays an important role. For macro macroeconomic equilibrium. And we have seen in the previous class that aggregate demand concept and that is different from the micro demand concept. In microeconomics we take demand curve as a function of price for individual commodity for individual market. On the other hand, in macroeconomics, we take aggregate demand is a function of general price level. We all know that general price level is determined by consumer price index number and through uh, inflation rate. General price level is calculated by thousand thousand commodities and their prices that have been used by statisticians using different formula for uh, index number, price index number, quantity index number and then we arrive at the conclusion that the CPI, consumer price index number is calculated and that is general price level is formed. So we establish all these things in the previous lecture. Again now we take the views of American economist. We all know that there is a always a, a debate between American economist and British economist. We have a history of this debate, Keynesian economics, Keynes and, and uh, uh, Milton Friedman and others, American economists. Some American economists say that in order to find out aggregate demand by having uh, aggregate uh, adding up by by adding up uh, the demand of all goods and services uh, used by all people can be used to derive an at an aggregate demand, that is aggregate demand for entire national macroeconomy. It is also said by American economists that law of demand applies to all goods and services aggregated in the aggregate demand curve. So we can expect uh, that this aggregate demand to be downward sloping for the macroeconomy too. But we cannot really establish that in the market for goods and services uh, institution has to collect, uh, involve in collecting data and analyzing phenomenal amount of data for all the goods and services into the macroeconomics. So, American economists think that uh, we can utilize it increases a quantity of money equation. That is, quantity equation of money that was propounded by Irving Fisher in 1911. And it is said by macroeconomists that we have a proxy for all that, uh, what we did aggregative, uh, aggregating the uh, 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 demand curve for all the goods and services uh, from the micro to the aggregate demand for the macro. This entire process uh, will be uh, will be done. But uh, there is a another route to derive aggregate demand in macroeconomics. Uh, we all know that there is a market for money. 
just as we expect that the market for loanable fund and the market for goods and services both are coming to equilibrium <coughs> at the same interest rate. We expect the market for money and the market for goods and services to work in a similar way. American economists argue that in addition to other ways in, the, in which the markets are related, we certainly do expect that if there is any differences, that differences uh, may be uh, competed away by arbitrage. So, American economists suggest that supply and demand model uh, which are generally used to find out aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve. There is a similar way, <coughs> similar way in the macroeconomics. We can use quantity equation of money as our proxy for the aggregate demand in the market for goods and services. <coughs> Original equation of Irving Fisher, quantity equation of money, M A is equal to PT. This we have uh, seen at graduate level teaching. M B is equal to PT. M is a nominal money supply. B is velocity of circulation of money. P means aggregate price. And Y stands for income. At macroeconomics, we can use this quantity equation of money as our proxy for aggregate demand in the market for goods and services. We find that nominal money supply is represented by M, velocity of circulation is represented by B, velocity of circulation equation E, B is equal to E by M, E means Aggregate spending, Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, in goods market, service market, money is uh, moving and this velocity is calculated that in one year how many times rupee money are transacted. So velocity of circulation is equal to E by M. Suppose M is 100 and E is 100 plus 100 plus 100 <coughs> equal to 300 in one year. In one year, 100 rupee money, 100 money unit transacted three times and it has led to total spending 300, but actual money is 100, so velocity of circulation will be 3. Then P is aggregate price, the whole market. That may be general price level, which we considered in the previous lecture. Y stands for income. So nominal money supply times the velocity of circulation of money is equal to aggregate price times income. This is the quantity equation of money propounded by American economist Irving Fisher. This way, this we will uh, rearrange, rearrange it.
to get a relationship between income and aggregate price. And then first m is equal to pt, t is replaced by y, t mb mb is equal to pt the original equation in average form that is t is replaced by y because y is very common for output and income. In macroeconomics aggregate income and aggregate output both will be equal. Therefore y will be used for output, y will be used for income and y will also represent aggregate demand because income or output converts into demand. Aggregate price is P. We can replace it by AP also to make it simple. So equation becomes MB is equal to PY replacing T by Y. Then Y is equal to we are finding out the value of Y. Y is equal to MB 1 upon AP this P is represented, P is here, P is equal to AP, so we will replace P uh, here as AP. And therefore, our equation will be AP is here, this is inverse relationship inverse relationship. If aggregate price falls, income falls. Aggregate price falls, income rises. Aggregate price falls, income rises. Aggregate demand rises. So what we find out that if aggregate price falls, there will be aggregate price falls, there will be a rise in income and therefore rise in aggregate demand. Rise in income and rise in aggregate demand. Aggregate price falls, income rises, aggregate demand rises. So it is quite interesting that we will get a negative slope of aggregate demand curve. In this equation, M is equal to P Y. We finally arrive to Y is equal to M B is equal to M B times one by A P. As we see in the diagram also, aggregate price increases. Income goes down and therefore there is a rise in aggregate demand. Income goes down, uh, aggregate, aggregate price increases, income goes down and aggregate price decreases, income goes up. Aggregate price decreases, aggregate price decrease in income rises and therefore aggregate demand rises. On the other hand, aggregate price increases, the income goes down and aggregate demand will be affected. Income goes down. This curve is aggregate demand relationship between aggregate price. As aggregate price rise, as aggregate price increases, 
и как горы там. The carving is aggregate demand relationship between aggregate price, AP and out for a given nominal money supply, M and a given velocity of money P. So when we find out the income, then aggregate demand or income and AP has inverse relationship. AP has inverse relationship and thereby we can establish downward sloping aggregate demand curve with respect to aggregate price explained with the help of quantity equation of money propounded by Irving Fisher and we can find out that aggregate demand directly uh, we, we can use quantity equation of money our proxy for aggregate demand and therefore we can find out that in the economy there will be rise and fall of aggregate prices in macroeconomics macroeconomy when aggregate price rises income falls down. On the other hand, if aggregate prices falls, income goes up and income is directly related to output and output to aggregate demand. So inverse relationship between aggregate price and aggregate demand established through income and output without going into the details of aggregation and adding up problem. This has been suggested by American economists and nowadays it is frequently used by American economists to analyze aggregate demand with the help of mv is equal to py <coughs> velocity of circulation means one unit of money how many times one unit of money how many times in a year it had tra been transacted so look here velocity of circulation of money formula is given by Irving Fisher, E by M. M means nominal money supply, that is 100. E means aggregate expenditure in a one year, 100, 100, 100. So this is 300, 300 by 103. Then the velocity, then velocity of circulation is equal to 3. While analyzing M and V, M and V, two terms are assumed constant. In this equation, M and V <coughs> are assumed to be constant. So variable is Y is a function of 1 by AP times mv where mv is constant this uh, system is most important to analyze the demand for money so velocity of money and uh, it is said 
that this is shown, this is shown increase, this is shown increase or decrease, increase or decrease of aggregate demand. AP falls to AP1. Falls. AP falls. AP2 falls to AP1. Then aggregate demand OAD will, will increase. Increase. Aggregate demand increases. Aggregate demand increases. If we take the reverse, that AP1 rises to AP2 rise. Rise in aggregate price. Then what will happen? Output was at AP2. Output was AD. OAD1. AP1 at AP1 B point. At B point AP1 output was O A D two. This will go to O A D one. It means aggregate price rises, aggregate demand decreases, aggregate demand decreases. Aggregate demand decreases. Aggregate demand decreases. So we find that in this diagram, through the quantity equation of money, we have established aggregate demand curve, which is American method to derive American method to derive aggregate demand without going through the root of ADAS model. Without going through the root of ADAS model, this method is adopted. This method is adopted. And what we see that in the economy, aggregate demand curve may be derived through taking a proxy uh, uh, for uh, taking aggregate demand through the quantity equation of money. The, so this uh, uh, analysis is American method which is nowadays being used frequently in US economy universities, in European universities, in UK universities and in Delhi University, in Bombay University, in Madras University, in Central University, everywhere nowadays. There is two routes. One is ASAD model route to derive aggregate demand, aggregate supply, and find out the macro uh, economics equilibrium. Whereas the another method, which is becoming nowadays popular among the economic American economists, that take the MV is equal to PT or MV is equal to PY or take the 
एम वी इज इक्वल टू ए पी वाई वी कैन फाइंड आउट वाई इज इक्वल टू एम वी इज इक्वल टू वन बाई ए पी बाई दिस वी कैन इज टेक फर्स्ट टाइम दैट एम वी इज मनी वी इज वेलोसिटी एम टाइम्स वी दैट इज टेकन एज कॉन्स्टेंट फैक्टर देन देर आर टू थिंग्स वाई एंड ए पी दीज आर वेरिएबल्स एंड वाई डिपेंड्स अपॉन ए पी सो वाई इज डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल एंड ए पी इज इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल सो ए पी फॉल्स एग्रीगेट प्राइस फॉल्स देन देर विल बी राइज इन इनकम If aggregate price falls, there will be rise in income, leading to rise in aggregate demand. So the inverse relationship between aggregate price and aggregate demand is established through the root of income output model. We all know that in macroeconomics, y is equal to income, y is equal to output at national level in the economy. So we see that y is equal to mv times 1 by ap will be utilized uh, in the case of deriving aggregate demand if aggregate price rises mv constant then income will fall as soon as income will fall aggregate demand will fall and again there is a relationship that ag ap rises and aggregate demand falls will be established so inverse relationship <coughs> between aggregate price and aggregate demand is very well established by american economist taking the quantity equation of money as uh, proxy for aggregate uh, demand derivations this is increase in increase or decrease this is to be noted that output aggregate demand increases or aggregate demand decreases this is this is not shift this is not shift in aggregate demand curve this is not a shift in again this is not shift in demand this is increase or decrease this is increase or decrease in demand curve and therefore we come to the conclusion that aggregate demand curve will be downward sloping curve and it will it will change quantity of aggregate demand may vary with the variations in aggregate price curve will be downward sloping as shown in the diagram this is american view on derivations of aggregate demand where ads model is bypassed and a proxy for the aggregate demand the quantity equation of money is utilized which is more suitable a more easier way which is already established that even fisher if you see the book even fisher uh, the purchasing power of money even fisher has given equations related to aggregate spending equations related to average pricing if you see the Uh, the purchasing power of money written by Irving Fisher. In its appendix, you will see that average prices, averaging of prices, is done through arithmetic mean method, through geometric mean method, through harmonic mean method, and they have uh, uh, Fisher has shown that you can get the average of all economy. 
transactions in the average form he said that capital p is always used for average term average term of prices so this average term is being taken as the aggregate price in the economy as a whole and it is important to find out that a downward sloping aggregate demand curve is established with this american technique known as quantity equation of money thank you